Today, let's take another look at the Super Elite Primaris veterans, the mighty melee murder machines that are the Blade Guard. Hello and welcome back to Warspets Tactics, the strategy focused 40k channel, where today we're taking another look at the Blade Guard veterans, who are perhaps more relevant than ever. Now, one of their main competitors in Vanguard veterans got a couple of points points nerf in the previous chapter approved points update. Bladeguard veterans are certainly one of the strongest base marine units out there right now, and quite a relevant one that a lot of people have in their collections due to them being present in the Indomitus box. In this video, we're going to go over their datasheet, talk about a few of their strengths and weaknesses, how they perform best with a few relevant chapters, buffs and synergy from characters, a look at their damage output, and how I'd use them in-game. Plenty to cover for these scary Primaris melee specialists, so let's take a look at what we've got. So Blade Guard veterans are of course an elite's choice for Codex Space Marines, 35 points per model, which gets you a fairly boosted Primaris stat line, 6 inch movement, weapon skill and ballistic skill 3+, plus, strength and toughness 4, a mighty 3 wounds and 3 attacks, leadership 8 and a 3 plus save, further augmented by a storm shield, meaning that effectively they're always going to be a 2 plus armor save and a 4 plus invul. Perhaps the most interesting thing on their profile is the fact that they're 3 wounds, it means that they're remarkably tanky for a standard Primaris sized model. Every model is equipped with a Storm Shield, Heavy Bolt Pistol, Mastercrafted Power Sword, and Frag and Crack Grenades. The Mastercrafted Power Sword is a really nice generalist weapon, Strength 5, AP-3, and Damage 2, meaning that combined with their volume of attacks, they're going to be good against killing virtually anything. Enough hits to blend through hordes, and a nice mid-strength multi-damage attack that should stack a decent amount of wounds on hard targets as well. It's really nice for a slow melee unit to be a good generalist threat, as often without massive speed, you're not going to have all that much control of what you're able to charge. The heavy bolt pistols are handy as well, 18 inches, strength 4 and AP-1. If they don't want to advance for any reason, then you're likely to plink away a few enemy infantry, and could also fire them in close combat if needed. And of course, if you're up close and personal, then throwing in a frag or crack grenade before you charge isn't the worst idea either. You can take them in squads of 3 to 6, so typically I'd recommend a unit size of 3 to 5. 3 is good enough for an incidental threat, if you want a really big battle line unit going up to 5 is nice. I wouldn't normally recommend going to 6, as that increases the cost of transhuman physiology by 1 CP, and kind of makes them needlessly vulnerable to blast weapons and unit coherency. Otherwise, the only weapon option is the option to change out the sergeant's pistol. For an extra 5 points, you can either take a plasma pistol or a neo-volkite pistol. I'd say that neither of them are really strictly necessary, I'm not a fan of the plasma pistol, as I really would not want the chance of sniping my own blade guard sergeant. But the Neo Volkite pistol isn't a terrible damage increase for the points it costs. Two shots at strength 5, no AP and damage 2, with a slight chance to do mortal wounds. It's kind of take or leave for me, no big deal either way. Otherwise, they have the standard Space Marine special rules and keywords, Angels of Death, Combat Squads, and if they're either in Dark Angels or Space Wolves, they get their Elite keywords, the Deathwing or the Wolfguard one. Wolfguard is almost borderline meaningless as a keyword to be honest, though Deathwing is incredibly powerful indeed, as we'll see in a second. Finally, as Primaris Core Infantry, they're about as easy to put buffs on as it's possible to be in the Space Marine Codex, loads of options with character synergies, stratagems and other buffs. Overall, Blade Guard are a good general purpose take all comers melee unit, really very durable for the points with Storm Shields, 3 Wounds and Transhuman Physiology very flexible for buffing, and they have good synergy with many chapters, particularly the melee focused ones. In terms of weaknesses, they are kind of slow for a melee unit, moving only 6 inches they won't have the greatest opportunity of what they want to charge, and they are kind of underwhelming against anything with a minus 1 damage effect in play. It's going to halve their efficiency against things like Dreadnoughts or Death Guard. They'll still put a fair few amount of wounds through, but nowhere near as much as they would do against units without that buff. Talking of chapter combos, here are a few of the more relevant ones. Basically, if your chapter does melee in a good way, then you're in for a very good time indeed with these guys. I'd say perhaps the single chapter that screams Blade Guard veterans to me the most are the White Scars, mainly because they counteract one of the Blade Guard's main weaknesses, their slow movement, by being able to advance and charge. It means on average you've got just about a 17 or 18 inch threat range on the charge, never mind any command rerolls or chaplain litanies, so you could really get these guys a long way across the board in just one turn. Of course, it doesn't matter how hard you hit the enemy if you never reach them in the first place. They're also a great target for the White Scars Assault Doctrine. It makes their power swords a massive flat damage 3. In particular, that'll cut through other Blade Guard or Gravis Armored Space Marines really easily, 
and put a lot more hurt in against big tough targets. As if that weren't enough, Corsaro Khan himself will be great with them. Giving them plus 1 to wound and reroll 1s to hit is a spectacular set of buffs for an 100 point character, never mind Khan's own prestigious melee abilities. Basically, White Scars really like their Blade Guards. Otherwise, Blood Angels also have a good time, their wound toughness 8 on 4s and standard Space Marines on 2s. Plus 1 to advance and charge also helps them with mobility, and their extra attacks in the Assault Doctrine don't hurt either. A unit of 5 of these gets a whopping 26 attacks on the charge. Space Wolves muster a huge amount of raw might, getting plus 1 to hit and then exploding 6s in their own Assault Doctrine, a ton of helpful character buffs from their unique melee heroes, and some really nice stratagems such as being able to get into that Assault Doctrine early, or getting plus 1 to wound if they engage a hard target. The Dark Angels get plus 1 to hit if they happen to be charged, as in the enemy turn they count as stationary, and in the Assault Doctrine their Deathwing ability allows them to reroll wounds versus big targets with 8 or more wounds, and also against characters. In the right circumstances, that is going to add up to a truly huge damage buff. Perhaps more importantly than that though, Getting the Deathwing keyword means that you essentially have transhuman physiology in play the entire time. You can't be wounded on anything more than a 4+, plus, even if your opponent fires last cannons at you. Really nice to just have that there permanently, without having to even bother paying the CP. Finally, Dark Angels have some really good synergy with the Bladeguard Ancient. He gives them plus 1 to hit natively, but he can also bear their unique Pennant of Remembrance, which gives them minus 1 damage as well. This guy slogging up the board alongside a couple of big units of blade guard is going to be an absolute nightmare to shift, and certainly no slouch in close combat either. Finally, for the more melee focused chapters, we have the Black Templars. Reroll charges and ignoring some mortal wounds is very nice. They can get sixes to auto wound in their doctrine, and they can get that doctrine a little bit more easily by using the Crusader Helm relic, which is a handy one to have around on an accompanying character. They've also got some very nice unique litanies, including a 5 plus feel no pain and the Devout Push stratagem can work wonders with them, say if they pile out of an Impulsor, they can potentially even get into combat after that. I did make a video on Devout Push if you'd like to give that a search. Otherwise though, they do basically work in near enough any chapter. Ultramarines have some great character buffs for them, Iron Hands give them nice extra durability with that feel no pain. They're a nice choice for Raven Guards to pre-game move, or to start way up the board with their Warlord trait ability. Salamanders have their plus one to wound stratagem, and can potentially shield more fragile units just behind them with their Noble Self-Sacrifice ability. And on their raw stats alone, they can still add plenty to a Death Watch or Imperial Fist army. But other than chapter specific stuff, there's plenty that you can do for the Blade Guard. Naturally, they get their Shock Assault and Assault Doctrine built in innately, both of which are nice space ring damage increases that they always get, and they have just about some of the best options in character support out of any unit in the Codex. Maybe one of the most important choices is the Rite of War Warlord trait, that allows a nearby character to give anything obsec within 6 inches, and obsec blade guard are basically exactly what you want. They're a durable melee unit that really wants to be slogging straight up the board towards the enemy lines, and vesting the objectives off their opponents. If you do have a character supporting them, I'd strongly consider buying this in for a command point. Otherwise, Chief Apothecaries can heal them, set up new models, and give them feel no pain. Captains and Lieutenants can give them their re-rolls, particularly the Indomitus pattern ones with the Storm Shield synergize quite well. There's no point in paying for additional mobility if you're going to be following the Blade Guard around. The Blade Guard Ancient can give them plus one to hit in combat and the potential to attack in death. For me, I don't think he's quite as worth it compared with, say, the Captains and Lieutenants, just because the Captains and Lieutenants pack a melee threat in their own right where the Blade Guard Ancient doesn't. I'd usually only use him in Dark Angels, when combined with that Pennant of Remembrance. Librarians could use Veil of Time or various chapter-specific psychic powers, White Scars have some handy charging ones, and Salamanders have ones for making their units really, really tough. Chaplains can give you plus one to wound, plus two to charge, and their Litany of Hate rerolls. And finally, the Judiciar perhaps pairs better with Blade Guard than any other unit in the Space Marine Codex. Their squad footprint is small enough that they could easily fit within his aura range meaning that the opponent will be fighting last when they charge them, and the Blade Guard have enough damage outputs to really make that count. You could make them a very, very hard unit to charge indeed, with one of these guys around. Out of these though, I wouldn't go absolutely mad with the characters, one or two at most, and either Apothecaries, Captains or Lieutenants, or Chaplains would be my top picks. The Blade Guard are one of the better units to use the Space Marine Impulsor as well. They are relatively slow, and an Impulsor could certainly ping them over to the other side of the board very quickly on turn 1, the main disadvantage being no charging, 
unless you're doing some Black Templar devout push shenanigans. Still though, could be very worth it, even if they didn't disembark on the one turn, they could potentially use it as a battlefield bunker to launch a turn 2 assault. They also could think about using strategic reserve, having an 100 point unit of blade guard turn up on the opponent's flanks could be really annoying, you just ideally wouldn't want to have them screened completely out of being useful, and they'll be better in any chapter that has an innate charge bonus, say blood angels or black templars. Finally, as an immensely dangerous and durable close combat unit, Bladeguard can be a very good target for them. Transhuman physiology for one command point is usually very good value, particularly if you're about to be targeted by a whole bunch of strength 8 or higher weapons. It could almost half the amount of damage that those durable blade guard are taking. Gene Warp Might might occasionally be worth it if you need to grind out every tiny bit of melee damage. Sorry, I wrote exploding sixes there. Basically, it's sixes to hit automatically wound the target. It's particularly good for blade guard if they happen to be fighting something that's tougher than their strength, say like a tank or something. Otherwise, a command point to reroll a charge could be a really good value one if they happen to make it, two command points to interrupt the enemy, or potentially even command points for rerolling the odd storm shield save could be a really big deal from time to time. So now we've talked about all their buffs, let's take a look at their damage output. Say we have a basic squad of 5 blade guard, 175 points, so not even really all that big of an investment within your army. If the stars align and you get a full charge off with them, even a base completely unbuffed squad in no melee chapter would kill around 9 guardsmen, a big 8 space marine intercessors, 3 gravis marines, or 8 wounds to a toughness 7 vehicle. Those are some respectable numbers, no matter what you charge at. However, obviously things get much more silly if you include other things. Say we had a Blood Angels blade guard squad being accompanied by a Primaris lieutenant with the rights of war, and it happened to be turn 3 or later, or you paid the command points to put them into the assault doctrine earlier. You can do that for 2 command points by the way, I probably should have mentioned it in the stratagem section. In any case, with re-rolling ones to wound, plus 1 to wound with the Blood Angels on the charge, and an extra attack per model, you're now up to 17 dead guardsmen, pretty hilariously an average of 17 dead intercessors as well, they go through them just as easily with AP-4, 7 dead Gravis armor marines, or an awesome 20 wounds to a toughness 7 vehicle. That's the plus 1 to wound really coming into effect there. If we had a similar situation with white scars, we'd get 11 guardsmen, 11 intercessors, 8 gravis armor with their big flat damage of 3, or 16 wounds to a toughness 7 vehicle. To be honest, I probably should have done the numbers with Khan, they would have been even more ludicrous with plus 1 to wound on top of that. Even though those numbers are a little bit lower than the Blood Angels though, I would bear in mind that the white scars get to advance and charge on top of that, so are incredibly easy to make it into melee. So how would I use Bladeguard veterans in game myself then? As I said, I'd like to take them in units of 3 to 5. 3 is still a very respectable melee threat, though maybe a bit more of a deterrence melee threat rather than tangling with your opponent's elites, and 5 of them will still have them good for coherency issues, blast weapons, and being a target for cheap transhuman physiology. I think I'd usually run them just supported by just the one character, unless they happen to be in the middle of the battle line and you're buffing multiple units, and if Rights of War isn't in play elsewhere in the army, I would certainly look to make use of it on them. When deploying, I'd have a clear objective for them in mind, they're fairly slow so they can't just chase down the enemy units, generally the best bet is to pick an objective somewhere in the midfield, decide that you're going to make for that, and dare your opponent to put something in the way for them to charge or to try and take it off you. Compared with most space marine units, they don't have to be quite as cagey about deployment, they are very very tough, so if the opponent's going to shoot anything at all, having them dump firepower into blade guard with transhuman physiology really isn't the worst thing for you. If you can though, then getting the squad to be toe into light cover could be really valuable, it puts them down to a theoretical 1 plus save, so even if they take any firepower that's AP minus 1, they'll still be saving on 2s. Ideally though, you don't just want your opponent to ignore them, put them in a position where they're going to cause pressure, though if they happen to take a midfield objective and your opponent just backs off, then that's going to be good for you for winning the mission. In game, each turn I would very strongly consider advancing if you're not going to be charging, the extra mobility is going to be pretty handy compared with snapping off a few measly pistol shots. The faster they cover the ground towards the enemy, the faster they'll become a problem that needs to be dealt with. I'd strongly consider transhuman physiology if they start to get focused down by high strength weapons, and ideally if they have a target to charge then they'd want to aim for elite infantry and avoid any units with minus one damage weapons on them. As we saw by the damage output, things like two wound intercessors are pretty much ideal prey. Overall, seeing as quite a lot of Space Brain units have been nerfed in one way or another over the past few months, I think Blade Guard veterans are now becoming one of the strongest units in the Codex. 
for the role of advancing melee damage dealers, their main competition are the Vanguard veterans, most commonly seen with Storm Shields and Lightning Claws, jumping around for 30 points with Jump Packs. I think there's certainly a room for both of them in the Space Marine Army list, though the Vanguard veterans recently went up 2 points, which might have people reconsidering Blade Guard as an alternative. For those 30 points, the Vanguard veterans do have slightly worse hitting power most of the time, though they might be a little bit better against Chaff Hordes. Their durability is a bit worse really, they only have 2 wounds for only a few points less, and they can't use Transhuman, but of course they make up for that with far better mobility, and the option to deep strike if they need to. As I said, I think there is room for both of them. It'll be interesting to see if we do see a few more Bladeguard squads played, following the Vanguard Vet nerf. In any case, I really like Bladeguard, they're a fun unit to use, as well as some pretty spectacular looking models, some of my favourite looking ones out of the entire Primaris range. As always, let me know your thoughts if I've missed anything on the Blade Guard down in the comments below, or just how they've been performing for you in games yourself. If you've enjoyed the video, then feel free to subscribe to Allspets Tactics, or I'll certainly keep the 40k videos coming, including plenty more for the Space Marines. Finally, I'd just like to mention one way in which you can support the channel, which is my Element Games affiliate link down in the video description below. If you were looking to pick up some Blade Guard veterans at a discount, or indeed any other 40k stuff whatsoever, Element Games is a UK based discount retailer giving 10 to 20% off Games Workshop's miniatures. If you click the link in the video description when you order anything through them, a small amount goes to help support Allspets Tactics without costing you any more whatsoever. It can just be a small way to help the channel out if you were thinking about buying in something anyway. For people in the USA and Canada, there is also an Amazon affiliate link down in the video description as well. Again, that works in basically the same way. Click on the link, buy literally anything off Amazon. A small amount goes to help support Allspets Tactics, and doesn't cost you any more. In any case, an absolutely massive thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.